Start recording. Freaking yeah, dude. We are back at it with methods again. This time, let's actually start returning values to those methods. So here is a basic method. We should know how to create these now. All of this, of course, is the head section. Then we have the body section down here. And this one is just adding two numbers together. So a quick run, and you can see I get eight back. So this is all fine and dandy until you actually want to use this result right here. Every single method is basically like its own world. It has its own little scope, which means that all your variables and stuff that you declare inside of those only are accessible inside of those methods. So if I were to, for example, put this up here and try to run this, notice I would get that they can't find the symbol and it says the variable result is the issue here that's because this result doesn't exist within this main method here it only exists in this one down here how do we get this result from inside this method into this main method here well one thing you could do is you could make a class variable so you could make a variable out here make it static if you're not gonna create an object out of this so now we actually have a variable inside our class that we can use throughout all of our methods. If we do this though, we have to make sure to get rid of this de declaration inside here because this result is going to override our bigger result. So this result is gonna be its own separate result variable inside our thing. So notice we get back zero here. That's because class variables default to zero. And it's because of their constructor, etc., etc. We'll get into that. But in order to actually edit the class variable, you're going to want to just display result here because it's already been declared up here. So all we're doing is just initializing it down below. So now we run this again and we get our correct answer. The bad thing about having a class variable, though, is that all of your methods can edit it. I just want to send this result variable back to whatever called it. I don't want everything to be able to edit it. I just want whatever called it to be able to edit it. So to do that, we're going to return this value into our main method signature. We do that with the word return. So we hit return, a space, and then we put whatever we, we want to send back to whoever called it, which in this case is this main method here. So we're going to hit return result with a semicolon. And now what's going to happen is this result is going to be set, basically. It's going to turn this whole section, or rather this whole section, into the answer. It's going to turn it into this result. That means if we wanted to, we could set a number equal to this method, because again, all of this is going to be turned into a number, or we could just display it out directly. So first, let's deal with this case. Now, before we go ahead and run this, we have to change our return type. So right now it's void. So we're going to need to put integer here, basically telling this method that it's going to be turned into an integer or it's going to return an integer. Call our method with the inputs five and three. Five goes here, three goes here. Five plus three equals eight. That goes into here. So eight is returned into this method header as an integer. So this whole section right here is actually going to turn into 8, which goes here. That also means that we don't even need to set it up, honestly. We could just print it out if that's all you were wanting to do, because, like, say, this just represents a number now. So getting rid of this, we can use it in any other situation just like we would do anything else. So we could even add on to this, because, again, this whole thing is just going to turn into an integer, right? So running this, as you can see, we get 14. So that's how returning works. And we can go ahead and create more of these. This one I want to be, I want it to return a double. Also, you don't even have to have a variable to calculate the answer here. You could put in one divided by into directly after your return statement, and then just bypass having a result variable altogether. Put in the numbers that I want to divide, so Let's put in these two numbers here, and this whole thing will be turned into a double that is equal to n1 divided by n2. So running this, and indeed, we get our answer. 
Last thing I want to note that is that as soon as you return a value, it's going to stop your method. So if I had, for example, a print right after this return right here, Java's even nice enough to tell you that there's an unreachable statement. Basically, this system.outprint right here, this is never going to be reached, so might as well get rid of it. So we can go ahead and do that. So if you have an unreachable statement, that's what the issue is. There's also another thing that you might come across. I'm going to make one now that says um, a method called is even. This one's going to return a boolean, which is just a true or false. And it's going to accept one integer. And we should already know how to do this. The number modulus of two, if that equals zero, then we have an even number. So if it does, let's return true, that it's an even number. And it's going to return true and false, so I could even have an if statement up here. Alright, so here's my setup. I call my method is even, or 5461 times 6, and I'm going to print out that the result is even. Otherwise, I'm going to say that it's odd. But when I go and run this, I'm going to get missing return statement. Because as soon as you make a method that, ha that returns a value, you have to include a return statement. Well, we did, right? So why are we getting the error? That's because it's inside of an if statement. If this returns false, if it's an odd number, we're going to skip this if statement altogether. And then there's nothing else here. That's why it says there's a missing return statement, because this right here never happened or has the possibility of never happening and if it doesn't happen then you still need to return a value so what we need to do is put else here and return false and this has to be the keyword else it can't be an else if statement because else is going to happen regardless of whatever this is as long as it's false the other thing we can do is just return false without any if statement at all because we remember we learned that as soon as you return something it shuts out of your method so if we get modulus 2 is 0 it'll return true and it's not going to continue and overwrite that with false as soon as we return true it's going to stop this and go back up and give us our answer now if none of this happens then of course it's going to return false so that's the cool thing about the return statement is that as soon as you call it, it's going to cancel whatever else happens after that. So running this again with our modified code and notice we get the result is even. If we change this to 5, we get the result is odd. So that is how to return stuff from a method. Thanks for watching.